Hey everybody, Matthew Sanchez here, and I had the opportunity to have a conversation with Caleb Perez, the son of our beloved Vicky Perez. Vicky Perez was a friend. She was a mother. She was a daughter. She was a sister. But most of all, she was a good person. She lived her entire life through service. She literally would give you the shirt off her back if you needed it. Unfortunately, Vicky Perez's life was cut short due to some complications in the hospital. And because of these complications, there have been some questions that have been risen that people want to know. Caleb and I discussed some of the details on what happened to Vicky Perez. But more than anything, here's what Caleb and I want you to walk away with. Life can throw some curveballs at you and some that hurt more than others. But it's not what happens to you. It's how you respond to it. So here's what life threw at the Perez family. But what they're doing with their life in honor of their mother is... Quite remarkable, if you ask me. So I think that is the intention that Caleb and I want you to walk away with in listening to this particular interview. As far as how they're doing, I think they're making it. As you know, death is something that you cannot be prepared for and grieves Grief sometimes comes in waves, but the good thing is that they all have each other and they have people that love them and that support them and are constantly checking up on them. So enjoy this interview. Listen with an open mind and open heart. And I hope and pray that you learn something from this. God bless you. You're watching an MSW production. I remember when I got the call, uh, Grace, who is our sister, she called me. Uh, actually, I called her. And I, you, you could just tell the look in her, her face. You know, we had been praying, me and Josh, you know, Josh, yeah. uh, we had been praying uh, together for you all know, in, in the knowing of us, mom, mom being in the hospital. And I get a text from Josh saying, Josh, you got to call her, man. So I called her and she told me she had just left. Mm -hmm. And immediately, uh, knowing I had to work the next day, I called out though. Uh, I rushed over there to you guys and you know, what surprised me was how well uh, you guys took it. Mm. And I think that speaks volumes for her as a mother mm. and the God in you and all of you individually. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's normally people take grief and they, they, don't, want, they don't want to be with nobody. They, they go in this deep, dark hole. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they get in, in these ways that they, they just don't want anything to do with anything. But you guys really embraced all of us. And it, it's almost like, it's almost like you didn't need us, but you did. Mm. You know what I mean? That makes wow. sense? Yeah. Uh, because I, I, I don't know if you guys prepared yourself for it, uh, but you took it extremely well. You know, as far, you know, so I commend you guys for that and the way that you handled yourselves. Uh, yeah. Y'all had some arguments. I saw, <laughs> I saw yeah. some of them. Yeah. So, and they were brutal. Yeah, they were brutal. No, look, they and I've brutal. seen I mean, worse. No, I seen worse, Kayla. You remember yeah. that time we was we was uh, we fireworks and we tried to fight. <laughs> we couldn't even light the fireworks because she was Zach was laughing, right? <laughs> no, y'all was fighting. Y'all were laughing. So I didn't see worse. Yeah. So, but <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. That was funny because I I never. 
that was my first actually fight with y'all. <laughs> but me and you fight all the time, but that was my first fight with yeah. you know, seeing you and seeing Zach, and Zach was gonna take you down. <laughs> yeah, so Yeah. Yeah, but so yeah, it was tough. It was tough for everybody though. It yeah. was tough. But more than anything, it was it, I didn't like I didn't I never feared that neither of you three would go get into a place where you you never wanted any company. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. I never feared that you guys would get into this hole. Yeah, because uh, I, I knew you guys had the power of God and that came nothing that had to come from her pouring into you guys spiritually, mm. mentally. So, yeah. So what was it like for you? You you you're you're sitting. Well, where were you? I never I never asked you that. Where were you when as in regards to what as a mom, mom passing? Um, whenever she did pass. Oh, uh, yeah. I was actually at the house with Captain Amy Argot. Okay. Um, and I was actually sitting in her chair, and I was just like, "Mom, I really want to be close to you right now." Yeah. And um, her chair is a place she, she, when she was home, you didn't sit in that chair. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You, you only, I mean, that's he true. witnessed it. Yeah, you, she was. Always, I, I could never like, sit in it because yeah. she was sitting in already. Yeah, she'd be like, "Get up out of my chair." Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was at home, and Captain Amy, she, uh, she was sitting in the kitchen and just. I, I don't really remember exactly what she was doing. She might, there may have been some food or something. I was just sitting there and I was really just sitting there. Yeah. And I was just like, just waiting. Yeah. I was waiting. Yeah. Um, and, um, and Kat made me, got the call and, and, um, she got text message and she said she's gone. But, um, my brother had also called me and he said, okay, she's gone. Yeah. And I, and I, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't cry. My, my eyes actually didn't yeah. tear up. Yeah. I, and I think it's because, when you get something in that like that shocking, you are literally in shock. Yeah. It doesn't. You may hear it with your ears, but it doesn't sit in your heart. Yeah. And so, Cat Mamie, um, she started to cry immediately, and I just yeah. just put my arms on her, and I just said, "It's okay, let it out." Yeah. It's okay. So yeah, it's yeah. um, yeah, that's that's where I was, and um, yeah. 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 So you were at home, and you got the news. I was at home. I I could not. Just being as close as we were, I could not be in the room when that happened. Yeah, I, mean, I think Grace was there, right? Yeah. Yeah, Grace, and I actually think Zach was there too. Okay. There were there. They said there were about fifteen to twenty people in the room when this oh, happened. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Now that I yeah. did, that's my first time hearing that. Yeah, there were there were about fifteen to twenty people. Oh wow. Um, okay. There were <laughs> there were actually so many people in the guest list that they said we couldn't put anybody else. Oh wow. On the guest list, and I said, well, this is the church. Yeah. This is what the church looks like when crisis yeah. happens. Yeah. This is this is this is what it looks like. Yeah. So they're not used to seeing that, <laughs> and you can tell that because all the looks that we get, like people just like. Yeah. Uh. And the looks you're meaning so because people with real don't yeah. know what they mean. Your mom had the ability to connect. Really, your grandfather, which is her mom, yeah, had, which which is why she has that spirit on her. Had the ability to connect with everybody and not just one group of people. Yeah. Like she she black and white. You know, Spanish, Asian, yeah, all yeah, that. She and yeah. she and, yeah. and everybody loved her for it. Yeah. So that's what you mean when you say it was a, it was uncommon for people to see. Yeah. Morning, morning, a white woman with black people in the room and white people together. So. Well, and, and I also I also say that in the sense of like, um, you know, they just were not used to seeing that many people in a room. Yeah. Or coming to yeah. visit somebody. Yeah. Normally it's just the same. It's just like a few people in a family. Yeah. And, and they don't yeah. understand that. Family is so much more than blood for us. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is. My yeah. uncle um, said in her service, you know, um, if anything, I mean, it doesn't make us look fancy. If anything, it just makes us a church. Yeah. And, and that's really where I got that from. And that's yeah. sat with me ever since then. Yeah. You know, um, which, you know, by the way, I mean, her service, um, it just goes to show you how loved she was. There was over 4,500 people who tuned in live to watch her service online. Yeah. And probably another like 150, 200 people in the room. Yeah. That just goes to show you the testament of, yeah. of how, how she loved, how many people she impacted, yeah. and the kind of legacy that she had. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, what was the process? When did the process start when you guys wanted to dig deep in how she passed? Because... You've got paperwork here. Yeah, that I do. We're gonna get eventually get to, but what made you want to go into that? Okay, we got to find out what happened or what what struck. Did you read something that said that don't sound right? Something don't sound right. No, um, we actually had one of her nurses tell us that if it was my mom or my wife, 
I would do some research. I, I would want an investigation down into what happened. Okay, now, okay, now, wait a minute. Because when you say that, I'm nurses just don't say that for no reason. Yeah. So it means there's something must have happened. Yep. Okay, that she knew about. But yeah. probably couldn't say because it's the sake of her job. Yeah. Got it. Understandable. Yeah. So when she said that, then you guys immediately went into investigation. Yeah, through talking with attorneys and trying to file a medical malpractice suit. Um, but unfortunately, in the state of Georgia, you have to have an affidavit signed by another um, by another doctor saying they oh. believe negligence occurred. Oh. And okay. without that, you can't file a oh, lawsuit. Right. And it, it's really, it's really, it's really kind of disturbing because yeah. like. Um, you see everything that goes on with these with these cops, yeah. doing what they do to people, yeah. and you can it's terrible. Yeah. But you can file a lawsuit like that. Yeah. But for whatever reason, you know, doctors are un, are untouchable. Mm. You can even sue politicians if you want to. But doctors and nurses in the state of Georgia they're untouchable, mm. or so they think they are. Yeah. Because I I truly don't think anybody gets away with anything. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, God was in that room when everything occurred. Yeah. He, he saw knows. everything. He knows. And, and, and he, he's coming back. He knows, yeah. And he, he's going he's gonna to have the final say. Right. So you guys have not filed a lawsuit? No, we have not. Um, or are you going to? <clears throat> I don't... I, I have peace with not filing one because okay. I believe there is a better way to go about this. Okay. Our heart is not, to get, is not to make money. Our heart is not to ruin people's lives. Yeah. Our hardest to find out truly what happened in the, in the most healthy way we can. Yeah. And to get answers. I mean, this happens. Um, you know, in 2016, the you know the the highest um, cause of death. You know. In this way. In, in medical malpractice killed okay. 250,000 people in 2016. Okay. It was a now number. Now that's something you research. And that's, yeah. That's that numbers you're throwing yeah. out, right? Yeah. I, okay. I researched. I researched okay. this and actually I saw an article John Hopkins. I think that was also that said it that they that, that that they was the number one cause of death in the state of Georgia. Wow, it's it's a big issue. Wow, it is a, it is a really big issue. Yeah, that needs to be tackled, and we need to, we need to care about getting answers for these families. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in the in the investigation, what did you find? So I'm just going to read you some stuff here. Yeah. Um, because because I really want to paint the picture of what she looked like and what her last moments on earth okay. were. Okay. Okay. Um, because it is it is it is very brutal. It, it is very, it is very, if you're a visual learner like I am, you kind of like just put things together in your mind. Yeah. And, and it, it's a very, very brutal thing. Yeah. And it really goes to show why the grief has been so hard to get through for us. Yeah. But yeah. God has been faithful. Amen. Amen. We'll talk about so, that too. So I'm going to, I'm going to read you some, um, I'm going to read you what the initial history of present illness is um, and, and what, and what they, what they diagnosed her with going into. It says the patient is a 54, 51 year old female with a history of breast cancer. Last chemotherapy was three weeks ago. She started having nausea, vomiting, diarrhea since the 19th. This is 19th of March, 2021. Yes, 2021. She has she has had a fever, body ache. She had COVID back in February. She prevents ne um, she prevents now by private vehicle for further workup, whatever that means. She denies any chest pain, shortness of breath. She took her last Tylenol a few hours ago. Okay, so one of the things that she that she also had that is not in this right here is that she was vomiting three to four times a day uncontrollably uncontrollably mm -hmm. so there was seriously something going on yeah. something this nurse probably saw yeah something yeah. something seriously going on which is why she said you, you probably well, it was a he but yes oh, yeah. Well, he, yeah yeah he, he said that to us um, so I'm, I'm gonna read to you um, I'm gonna read to you what what, what she looked like okay. how they describe it when they found her okay okay and this is a very brutal heart this okay. is a very brutal part okay. She was admitted to med floor. ID was consulted, and there, there's also just a lot of medical terms in here that we don't know what they mean. Okay, but, that's fine. But, me but, either. But, 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 but you know, yeah. but, but you but you get the gist. Right. She was admitted to med floor. ID was consulted, added flagel, and workup was initiated for GI source of sepsis. They did say that she had sepsis. She was sepsis at one point. CT chest, CT chest, abdomen, and pelvis without acute findings to explain patient symptoms. Culture was negative and C div negative. She was intermittently hypotensive. And would respond to would respond to IVF. So one of the things that they did say um, somewhere is that is that there was nothing in her lungs. There was nothing. But we have scans that show that her, the pockets of her lungs were filling with fluid, and there was fluid in her lungs. So and why would they say there was nothing if there was? Yeah. Okay. You do what you want with it. Okay. Okay. You do what you want with it. Yeah. I I don't want to say somebody lied, and you know, and um, you know, and you know. 
Um, right. There yeah. are things that I'm certain of that I'm going to talk about that I think they lied about. Right. Um, but you do what you want with it. Okay. Um, ultimately, you know, this was said to me a couple of days ago is that most doctors, um, when you don't have faith, you, you live, when you don't live by faith, you live by fear. Mm -hmm. And when things like this happen, people are scared to lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. So these doctors and nurses were living by fear of losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. That's why they would not answer any of our questions. That's why I even have a recorded phone call um, with these doctors who try to justify what happened. Right. And it, it's, 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 it's pathetic when you try to justify somebody's life. Um, but, um, where is that? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to start and this is the brutal part on 20, on 325 CMU called as acetol alert to bedside RM. She was found pulseless, synodic, code blue was called on arrival. Patient was synodic, chest compressions underway. ACLS was completed for approximately nine minutes. They said approximately for nine minutes in here, but there's other places where they say 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 13 minutes. They even said for a phone call, it was, ten, it was pro about 10 minutes. They mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't know. So from so you're, so you're insinuating that they just threw numbers out here. Yeah. Just, I, to, I really, just I, to fill a document sheet yeah. out. Okay. Because they have to. Legally, they have to. Yeah. Otherwise, there's an investigation right. into the medical records right. process. Got it. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And, and ultimately, actually, I was told by an attorney, and I don't know if this is true, but... Whenever you go in and you, you, you change things in a chart, it automatically initiates audit into the medical records. Mm. And they have to go in and research. They have to go in and audit. A, a third part, I guess a third party company comes in and does all these things. Right. And, um, you know. Okay, here we go. She was found with coffee ground, she was found with coffee ground vomit around her mouth. Coffee ground? Vomit around her mouth. I think that's a way of just saying that she was just found with vomit around her mouth. Okay. So get this picture in your mind. Of she's found pulseless and there's vomit around her mouth. Mm -hmm. She had a mask on. She had a mask on because she needed mm -hmm. vomit. Mm -hmm. What happened ultimately is that they knew she was vomiting. They took the risk. They knew vomiting was the main thing she was actually came in for. They put a mask on her face. She vomited in the mask and she drowned her own vomit. Mm -hmm. Her lungs collapse is what okay. we believe happened. Right. Um, because you know, and her heart stopped. The cardiac yeah. arrest. So for me, um, whenever you know that's an issue. You just incu you int you intubate him. You put him in ICU and put him on a vent. Yeah. Or, or whatever it is. However, that, I think it's a vent. That's but that's for you, though. Intubated. intubated, yes. Okay. And, and well... That's what, not something they would probably do, but that... So no, you're no, saying they, they did do it after this night. Oh, okay. They okay. did do it after this okay. night. Okay, okay. So, that, so after she started vomiting. And this, no, whenever they... After she went in cardiac arrest and us, oh, next okay. night they transferred to ICU, okay. that's what they did. Okay. They should have done that all along. Okay. If they knew right. this was vomiting, was an issue, she was vomiting three to four times a day. Yeah. They should have not taken the risk. Yeah. They should have not taken the risk. Um, so it, it, that's a very brutal picture, and I'm going to go into the other stats as well. Um, but I, I want people to understand that this stuff happens all the time. All the time. And our attorney told me 9 out of 10 medical malpractice lawsuits are not ever able to be filed. Why? Because there's never enough evidence. And ultimately what that is, is because the, the hospitals... Healthcare has too much power of the medical records. They control what's put in there. They control everything in that aspect. They should. I think what needs to happen is that they need to be released on a daily basis. The documents. Yes, on an hourly basis and a daily basis. Every hour, a new document needs to come out where they cannot go back and get it. Mm -hmm. So that if there is a mistake made, we can see it automatically. Mm -hmm. And if they try to correct it, they can be held accountable. Right. There is too much power in healthcare. I mean, we think about how much it costs to get even hearing aids in this country versus other countries. There is too much power in healthcare. Here, it, it, it is absolutely ridiculous. It is ludicrous. So, at, at mm. three, at three something in the morning, three three thirty something in the morning, my sister gets a phone call that our that our, our mother was went into cardiac arrest, and she can hear the machines going off in the background. Um, this is a part that I think gave my sister the most peace throughout out it all because what I had prayed for was God raise her up like Lazarus. Come on, like God, God, you brought her through stage for breast cancer. God, this is nothing for you. Mm. That you can do it. You don't need you don't need doctors. You don't need any of this stuff. God, you did it. You did it mm -hmm. back in the day. God, you can do it again. Mm -hmm. And so I I was I was skept I was I did not want to make any decisions because I really believe God was going to make raise her up mm -hmm. like Lazarus. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, he did. <laughs> Satan, you know, months after this happened, Satan came to me. Um, I mean, just came and just was Satan. Yeah, Satan. He just came and just started putting thoughts in my head. Caleb, your prayers didn't count. Mm. God didn't hear you. You don't, you don't hold any power or anything. But I had to remind myself. 
Everything I was praying for to happen, it happened. Just not on this side. She's more alive than ever, man. Yeah. She is more alive than ever. She is in heaven. She is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Yeah. I mean, she is more alive than ever. Yeah. And so I had to remind myself, it's like, there's never a prayer that that, that is that is not, that, that is, that is, that is, that God does not hear. There's never a prayer that God doesn't hear. He always yeah. hears. Yeah. But he's going to answer it according to his plan. Yeah. yeah. The night that it, it occurred, um, the interesting thing is, is in the medical records, which is what I'm looking at right now, is at 325, at 325, this is that, this is that Thursday morning when all this happened. Okay. At, at 1224 in the morning, room air, that was her oxygen therapy. Her oxygen level, O2 sat, is 83. Now, what does 83 mean? I'm not, I... that, that, that's her oxygen level. That's, okay. that's, that, that means she needs more oxygen. Okay, okay. Th that's actually not good, okay. apparently. Okay. That's what I've been told. Okay. Um, then, so she has a breathing machine, um, which is over here, which mm -hmm. we have. Yeah. Um, and, and they claimed to put her on it that night. But they didn't. They didn't. Now, how do you know they didn't? Did you did you visu visually see that they did not put it on? Is it documented that it was put on, but you somebody walked in and didn't see it? How do you know that it was not put on? The the the, the breathing machine has an SD card in it, okay. and it is essentially is like a cell phone service. Okay. And it connects to this software in the cloud. Okay. That this company has, there is absolutely no record of it ever being turned on that night. And how do you have that record? I have the document right here. Okay. I, I have the screenshots of her, of her of her thing. Okay. It says usage hours, Thursday, March 25th, no data. Mass seal, March 25th, no data. Events, March 25th, no data. Mask on or off, March 25th, no data. Yeah. Air score, March 25th, no data. Yeah. They may have put the machine out, but they never turned it on. And if you put it out and you didn't turn it on, it does no good. And the other thing that it says is that they put a thin, they put a thin line of oxygen to push through the mask from the machine to her to her nose. That oxygen was not going in at, at like it should, yeah. like it should have, at the rate it, she actually needed it if it was not turned on. It's just, it, it's just, it, there's nothing, there's no pressure pushing it through. Yeah. It's it's like it's like me doing this, but not actually blowing. Yeah. So all of this research you have, Caleb, your your thesis is what? She was neglected for for quite a while of oxygen, and that's why that's why they told us she would never have any. She would never have enough brain um, function to even lift her hands. Her brain was only functioning about 20 30 percent at this point. Yeah. And one more thing, if I can say this, is yeah. that the last record they have of of, of, of charting her oxygen mm -hmm. is at 1:22 p.m. The la next time they do it, it's after she coded. After, yeah. after that. And these went. are these are actual. This is actual. This, this is actual data. Like this is, this not is actual something data. You made and, 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 up. And, no, it's and you see, you, you see, it was used every night before at the hospital. Right. She went in on Monday. It was used every night before at the right. hospital that she was right. there. She right. didn't do, use. There was not one night where she didn't use this machine. Yeah, it's got, and it looks like it's getting lower. Like the the scale's getting lower, and this like it's getting higher, which means she needed it more. I guess I'm assuming. This is just her air score. Okay. Okay. Meaning that um that, that I mean I I don't know exactly what that means, but um yeah. But you, it, it shows that the, uh, the machine was not on. It shows that the machine something not on. that she needed yeah, was and, not and, on. And they didn't never turn and, it on. But in the paperwork, they clearly state that the machine was on. Yeah, it says place patient placed on home CPAP with five LN in line. And 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 the crazy thing is, is that they copy and paste it CPAP such BiPAP device. I see that. It just like they recorded it in her personal belongings. It's almost as if they copied and pasted it over. But it was never on. Yeah. Yeah. It was never on. There is a there is a lack of there is a lack of charting from the time that from 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 122 or 126 where something else was charted to the time where they found her. I think what happened somebody either fell asleep, somebody was on their phone because mm. I've actually I've actually I've actually seen people mm -hmm. in the hospital on their phone. Mm -hmm. There needs to be regulation about that as well. Yeah, that they shouldn't be able to be on their phone. They should not be able to even do that stuff. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. There there needs to be greater accountability in our healthcare system. Yeah. And so, what this shows is that is that there was clearly something that happened. Yeah. And and her her nurse who was and they lied about obviously. Yeah. They, they lied. They they lied to us a bunch. They yeah. lied. Just flat out lied. Yeah. Um. They they even um. Her her best friend is is a nurse and has been a nurse for I think twenty plus years. She mm. was in ICU for thirteen years. Mm. She is extremely alarmed by what happened. Got it. 
she is extremely right. alarmed by what happened right. and, 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 and that there is something here that they're not telling us. Yeah. And you want the world to know that this, this is something that happens every day mm -hmm. to different types of families mm -hmm. that they get away with obviously they don't, they probably would not go into detail about what happened to their loved one because they awfully put on paper, this is what happened. And some, for some reason, I guess if people see it on paper, they just believe it. Yeah. So no, what you're no. saying is that this <clears throat> needs, somebody needs to be held accountable, not just for mom, your mother, but for, but for people in general. Yeah. There is, um, one of the things that was very alarming for us is that they, I have our death certificate in front of me. It says, see, these people don't even know. Yeah. They they are they are so inconsistent with their records and uh -huh. things that they put. It says, if death occurred in hospital, emergency room slash outpatient. She was in ICU when this happened. Mm -hmm. When when they took her off the vent. Mm -hmm. That's not even accurate, man. Mm. That's not accurate. The second thing, and everybody, I want everybody that has prayed for her to know that she was cancer free, and and who knew that she was cancer free. You know, it's funny. I called her oncologist and I said, Hey, was mom cancer free? Because on the death certificate, her second cause of death, it goes first cause of death, second cause of death, third cause of death. Her second cause of death was metastatic breast cancer. Mm. And everybody knows she was stage four breast cancer yeah, free. I, I know that. Yeah. yeah. Even and so, so they lied about it to try to cover up and try to take people's eyes away of, of what happened that night. Yeah. And try to say that, try to say that, 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 that she was going to die anyway. Yeah. And her oncologist, when I called her, she was actually looking at the scans. Because yeah. I called, I called them. I said, "Can you have her call me?" She is a wonderful, godly woman. Yeah. And we even when I talked to her oncologist, I said, "Thank you." Yeah. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart, for all the expertise that you gave. They gave us many more years with her. Yeah. And as I'm talking with her, she said, "Caleb, God's still in control." Yeah. And um, and I I thought he wasn't for a little bit. Yeah. Did you and, want to give up? On on what on God? On the life in general, did no. you not want to be here at one point? Um, I wanted to be where she was, but if anything, I wanted her to come back. But I want to get back to this if I can. Um, she she said she said so. What they were trying to say essentially is that she would have died anyway. And and I said yes, ma'am. She said Psh, please. <laughs> she said Psh, please. Mm -hmm. What's the number? I want to talk to this attorney because they lied. Yeah. And she was infuriated by it that a sister in Christ. That this ha would happen to a, if anybody, a sister in Christ. And the Bible says, yeah. do not touch, it, it, the Bible says, do not touch, touch my, my anointed. anointed. Yeah. Yeah. So a after all of this, may I see that? Yep. This is everything. Um, this is all, this is all of her record. After, after all of this, knowing what you know, when, when do you find time to grieve? Huh. <laughs> It's like funny because this is a lot of work. So when when is the... yeah? So mom always fought for me. Through, but like you said, mama, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. through various circumstances and various trauma in life, and she fought justice for me. So um, it's kind of like I feel like I'm doing it again for her. Okay. Um, and so um, I was at this house. I went to this house church, and um, and uh, you know I. I woke up that morning and I felt like God was saying, "Okay, I'm gonna wreck you today," and but I'm gonna be there to catch you. And so we get to this house church and like the prayer is, "God, wreck us." Like, but I know you're gonna be there to catch me. So I get down on my knees, and and, and I'm praying and I'm thanking God prophetically yeah. for what He's about to do. And then right. and then after that, I I get back up and I tell Him like this thing just broke off of me that I just because I just said I'm sorry, God. Mm -hmm. I genuinely repented. Mm -hmm. And then I get back up and I just tell them they're, they're asking me to explain. And so I did. And then I get back down again and um, they just, I'm just like weeping. I'm apologizing to God. I'm apologizing to my mom. And I just felt like the Lord was just going down kind of like a diver. Yeah. You know, they go to the bottom of the ocean. They yeah. grab all they can. Yeah. They come back up. They put on the boat. Yeah. Sit for a second and then go back down. And I, I, what I feel, how I feel like that's happening is like, I'm weeping harder and harder as, as God keeps going down for more. I think mm -hmm. I'm done. I'm actually not done. I'm mm -hmm. just weeping harder and harder and louder and louder. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And so God was going down and, and, and healing those wounds. And when I get back up, I have no desire to file a lawsuit. I have no desire to do anything, get vengeance. My yeah. heart actually breaks for the people Yeah. at that point. 
And I'm and I have their names memorized now. Yeah. Where I'm just like, God, please, please, please have mercy on them. Wow. Have mercy on them. Yeah. Because you know, one thing I did say to them when I was in ICU is like, we're gonna find out what happened. Yeah. Eventually, we're gonna find out what happened. Yeah. And it's better that you just tell us now rather than us find out. Right. So now you have peace. You have peace yeah. towards them now. Yeah. So, what would you say to somebody who's grieving now? Um, record everything. If you're going through the exact same thing I'm going through, it doesn't yeah. matter. Research everything. Yeah, research don't, everything. Don't take anybody's voice. Yeah. Or research everything. everything. Yeah. Also, um, the other thing is like if you're if you have a loved one in the hospital, document everything. Yeah. Research everything. Yeah. Record everything. Record every phone call. Record every person. And that's legal. You can do that. As long yeah. as you were talking in it and you have your consent from yourself, you can oh, do that legally. Okay. Take videos. Um, take yeah. pictures. Oh, can, you everything. can record somebody else? Um, yeah. In videos, you can. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can okay. if, if you want to. Um, as long as you're not getting another patient. In the okay. Room. okay. Um, you know, you can do... You can so, do document everything. Making sure. And obviously, make making sure that you take time to... To grieve. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I would hate for somebody to doc do all that documentation and they're not taking time to grieve. Yeah. And then it's overwhelming. Well, well, if you're, if you're doing it with Jesus, you're going to grieve in the okay. process. Anything you do with Jesus, he's going to heal okay. you. Okay. Right. As long as he's involved, you're going you're gonna to be healed. Right. And so, um, yeah. Yeah. That's good, man. Yeah. That's good. So what's next for you? Um, I am still praying about that, waiting for the Lord to tell me what to do next. Yeah. Um, I do have a Shopify store in honor of mom. Right. Um, and Perez, with her handwriting on it, yeah, it says you can love buy you. Thing, love, yeah, things love you more. Hammering on mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah. yeah, it's called PerezProducts.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, and you can, um, I think the link will be in the description below. It, yeah. it, will, it yeah. will be. The um, link will be there. And so, um, uh, yeah, you can do that. And there's also something I just launched called the Jesus Collection. Okay, wow. I didn't know that. So, yeah, it's it's going to be, it's, it's very exciting. Exciting things are happening. And you're going to, it's going to be, some cool designs. That's um, good. From that, so that's good. Yeah. So you're waiting on God. I, I'm just waiting on God. That's the best way to do, it, man. Yeah. Wait on God. Yeah. So, man, listen. Thank you for allowing you to share this information on my platform. Oh, you know, thank I, you. I don't take it for granted, and I know somebody's gonna watch this and be delivered by it. I know somebody's gonna watch yeah. this and Jesus, who 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 have been in a grieving stage for years, and they're gonna watch this and be like, "Man, I got to get out." Right? I I, like, yeah. I, I just believe this is gonna help somebody. Yeah. I really believe that. So I thank you, and I'm honored that you asked me to help you bring this to the world. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> We're tired. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Mm -hmm.